Hey good people, Batavia here. We are talking how I grow collard greens. See you in a few. Okie doke, quick housekeeping items. Thank yous to those who like, watch, comment, subscribe, and share Be Better Garden. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. There's a button below. And if you do, hit the notification bell so you're alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. Alrighty, so next housekeeping item, I do want to cover some of the basics when it comes to collard greens and the setup I have here. And then we're going to dig into five things that I do when it comes to growing my collard greens. First off, this garden bed, this raised bed, sits on my concrete patio. I grew collard greens in this bed this year. Last year, it's the same bed size that I grew it in, and that's about three and a half feet wide and seven feet long. It's not very intentional. That's just when I was getting the wood cut, that measurement worked out. Um, so I have this bed set up. Um, and for the collard greens, which I think is really important when it comes to when I grow them, I planted these in June. And pretty much that's been my past. Like my garden gets planted late May, early June, a year or two, even as late as July. But in this case, this year I planted these in June. These were transplants and that's the first item. So I want to make sure that for me and my area that I'm not starting outdoors and direct sowing seeds. I want to give those plants a head start, if you will. So the first item is going to be kind of what you're planting. Georgia collards, I'm actually transplanting them into my garden versus direct sowing. So that's number one. Number two is what you're planting them into. So that's going to be what's inside of the raised bed. I do two things and that is garden soil. This is the brand I use. I think as long as you trust that it's a good quality, it doesn't have to be this brand. This has been consistent for me, so I continue to purchase it. Uh, it runs me previously about seven bucks a bag. It's two cubic feet. Um, and more recently, it's been on sale for like half that price. So more like 350 ish a bag, which is a killer deal. Um, I use that in many cases, especially with how soil compacts, especially with this being on the concrete patio, soil escapes from the bottom. I generally top this bed off in most of my garden beds each year with one bag or more of soil. I also add compost. So I use bad compost as well. This brand of Moo Newer. Um, I get this from Home Depot, the same as the bagged soil. This runs around 230, 240-ish a bag. It's a 25 pound bag and the directions say it should be able to cover a 100 square foot space. So my garden bed is almost, it's like a third of that. It's roughly about 28 square feet, but I use the entire bag. And I think that plays in my favor when it comes to what I'm growing here. Um, so that's number two, soil and compost is key. Third thing is mulch. So I use wood chip mulch. Um, and it's really because I receive, or I should say I go and get free mulch from a city program we have here in Chicago. And so I make sure to have my beds covered for a couple of reasons. One, it helps with moisture. Uh, it also helps cool down the soil. Um, the only kind of con, if you will, that I've noticed when plants are young, this year especially, I noticed that um, what I believe were roly polies were actually eating away at the young seedlings. So what I just did was brush away the wood chip mulch until those transplants actually grew up a bit. At that point, move the wood chip back around the plant, not on top of the plant, but back around the plant, and all was well. So that's number three, having some type of resource, and it doesn't have to be wood chips, but that can help protect the soil, help you retain water, especially when I'm growing them in the heat of the summer. So that's number three. Number four is cover. So I'll show you a shot of what I use. It's called tool fabric. I have a couple other videos on the site where you see it, but I'll put a clip of it. Uh, it's the fabric that you use for uh, tutus, right? So I get it from a fabric store, specifically Joanne Fabrics. It's I think like $2.99 a yard but they always have a sale where it's like 20% off of your entire purchase. 
I can't exactly remember the exact measurements for how many yards it takes to cover this bed, um, but I've consistently used that over the last, I think, three years. And the key there is it helps protect the greens from the cabbage moth, the white moth that flies around. If I don't cover a bed or I don't cover veggies like this, I'll see the green caterpillars and they start to eat away at the leaves. Um, so that's been really crucial to keep the greens healthy. So that's number four, making sure that it's covered. And I mean immediately after you plant, immediately after you harvest, make sure you're covering that bed back up. And that's in part why I have the PVC, the low tunnels here. And these greens have been snowed on a bit. <laughs> We've gotten temps as low as 25 degrees. They're super duper cold tolerant. There's obviously some drooping that's gonna occur. And then once the temperature warms up like it is today, they'll come back to life. So number five, number five is water. I know you thought it probably was gonna be fertilizer, but while I have improved on that in the rest of my garden, it really didn't happen for the collard green bed. So water though. That's gonna be important, especially with I'm growing them in the heat of the summer. Um, I'm actually gonna to try to grow collards next spring, so that'll be a little bit different. Um, but in the heat of the summer, you wanna make sure that you're not overwatering, but you're not underwatering as well. Generally, I water once a week, um, and it's until I feel like there's a soaking of the soil. In some cases, I can see the water uh, escaping from the bottom of the bed. I will admit, though, there's some weeks where I noticed that these leaves were drooping in the summer, and I knew that it was time for me to water. Um, so that's what I have. The type of green that I use as Georgia collards. The method I use is actually transplanting versus direct sowing. Number two, garden soil and compost. It's gonna be key for the bed you're growing in or the area you're growing in, the container you're growing in. Uh, one note for my containers, I don't use garden soil. I use a combination and sub and potting mix for the garden soil, just because the garden soil is a bit heavier. Um, let's see if I can keep track. Number three is wood chips or some type of mulch. Number four is covering. If there's anything you take away from this, I know it's not the prettiest, but it really does the job. So some type of row cover, that tool fabric, something that's light enough to let air and sun in, um, but heavy enough that you won't have like bugs, moths and things getting inside of it. Uh, and then lastly, watering. Just make sure that you're evenly watering. Um, and if there's an occasion where your leaves have gotten really droopy in the heat of the day, recognize that that happens from time to time, but your plant should recover from it. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you have any questions, just let me know and I shall see you all in the next one.